رب العالمين ولا عاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وصلى الله على نبينا الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين قالت عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها دخل علي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وكان عند أم سلمة فقلت له يا رسول الله ألم تشبع من أم سلمة فتبسم صلى الله عليه وسلم فقالت يا رسول الله نو لو نزلت واديا وفيه شجرة أكلت منها وشجرة لم تؤكل منها في أيهما ترتع يعني بعيرك فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم التي لم تؤكل منها فقالت عائشة وأنا تلك الشجرة كل أزواجك أو زوجاتك كانت عند رجل غيرك إلا أنا فتبسم صلى الله عليه وسلم ومشى Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها she said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم came to my house one day after being with his other wife Um Salama and we know that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم had multiple wives and it was his practice that he would go and visit his wives every day so Aisha she's narrating a time where her jealousy overtook her she became you know consumed by her jealousy and sometimes things come out of the mouth of the person that is jealous or that is angry because the shaitan has taken advantage the stakwa the alayhim shaitan shaitan has taken advantage of them at that moment and it's for a husband to be you know cognizant and to realize you know when your wife is jealous or when she's upset and angry and that not to respond we don't fight fire with fire in islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, it fa'abilati hiya ahsan, that you repel evil with what is better. You repel evil with what is better, not the same evil. Right? So Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to my house one day after being with Umm Salama. And I said to him, alam tishba' min Umm Salama, didn't you get everything you needed from Umm Salama? Meaning, why are you here? Didn't you get everything you needed from your other wife? So the Prophet وسلم, he just smiled and he didn't say anything. Because sometimes the best thing that you can say is nothing. As the scholars they say, either can kalamin can min If speaking is silver, then silence is golden. So, so sometimes the best thing you can say is nothing. Just smile and walk away. Right? After you come home from a hard day's work, you just don't have it in you. You're just like, I, I don't even have any more fight in me. You know, you got that. You won this round. Right? So he just smiled and he walked away. So Aisha, still persistent, she said, gave him a metaphor, still trying to drive her point home. She said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, if you settled in a valley <clears throat> and there were two trees in the valley, one of the trees had been eaten from and the other tree had not been eaten from, which tree would you allow your camel to graze around? You see where she's going with this. And, the, and it's for the man to be intelligent and to understand where your wife is coming from. <clears throat> it's called listening to what someone is not saying. Right? Sometimes people say things, but what is behind their words, what they are not saying, is actually more important than what they are saying. So here in this metaphor, what is Aisha trying to say? What she's saying is not important. What she is trying to say is more important. And it's important for the man to be wise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to be the khalifa, to be the vicegerent, to be the leader, to be the imam of our homes. And unfortunately, many men today have not been raised by fathers who taught them and passed down those jewels that you cannot get from a textbook. And that is called how to be a man. How to be a man and how to run your household. You have men today who engage women in long arguments and back and forth. Men don't do that. Men don't go back and forth with their wives. That's it. Sometimes she wins, you let her win. And sometimes, and most of the time, you're the, the more dominant because you are the authority. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you the authority. Ar-rijalu qawwamuna ala nisa. Qawwamun min kalimata qawwa. 
والمرأة تحترم القوة أي إنسان يحترم القوة هكذا الله سبحانه وتعالى سدد من عاد قوامون قوامون القيم which also extracted from that is القوي because you can't be قيم you can't be the protector and maintainer of someone if you are not powerful if you are not strong and people res- respect strength they respect strength especially a woman she respects strength and that doesn't mean to be overly aggressive but that means to know when to apply and when to fall back so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam <clears throat> listening to Aisha's metaphor he said i would allow my camel to graze around the tree that had not been eaten from Aisha said and i am that tree All of your other wives have been with other men except me. Meaning I'm the only virgin you married. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what did he do? He didn't retort. He smiled and he walked away. Tabassama wa masha. He smiled and he walked away. Because sometimes the best and that's a very offensive statement. All of your other wives have been with other men except me. Meaning the tree that had not been eaten from, that's me. So when she gave the metaphor, she was looking for what everyone else is looking for, and that is validation. She just wanted to be valid. Wanted to be valid. I'm the youngest of your wives. I'm the only one that has no children. All of your other wives have children. I I have to have some virtue over them that I can make me feel good about myself. And that is, I have never been married before. You are the only man that I have ever been with. While your other wives have been with other men. In a normal instance, this will be considered very offensive. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was listening to what she was not saying. All she wanted was validation. She just wanted to be valid. She wanted to know that she mattered just as much as the rest of his wives. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, knowing that ahead of time, he gave her that, which is why he responded, "I would allow my camel to graze around the tree that had not been eaten from." He knew exactly where she was going with it. Right from the moment he stepped into the house, it's important for the man to check the temperature of the home. Check the temperature. Right. Sometimes your wife has been dealing with the children all day long. She might have been at work, and she just not in the mood. And you, as a man, from the moment you walked into the door, you have to check the temperature. And if the temperature is cold, then you got to kind of fall back. But some men just walk into the home completely oblivious, oblivious. Oh, where's this? Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you do that? And that starts the argument. That starts, you know, the relationship taking, you know, snowballing into something that it didn't have to if we would have just checked the temperature. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows best. It's important for us to reflect on the family life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because it allows us to see him to be a human being. A lot of times we look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we look at his companions and we see. you know picture book images story book images of perfect people they weren't perfect people they were human beings and human is not perfect all spider with the honest that he created us in weakness we we are not perfect the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a worshiper yes as a messenger as a prophet yes as a human being no he was a human being he made family social mistakes just like everyone else and what i'm and what i'm saying is that Sometimes as a man we do things and not necessarily mistakes but sometimes we do things yeah I mean and we could have did something that was better right we could have done something that was better sometimes we we use the word mistake and it has negative connotations so what I'll say is sometimes you chose to do certain things when other things may have been better right and I showed all the lot to I had a comment that you know didn't you get everything you needed from your other wife I'm I'm the only virgin that you married all of your other wives have been with other men that is just it shows their humanness it shows that they were human beings and they had feelings right as Allah mentions in the Quran about how the kuffar they looked at the prophets mali had the rasul yakul ta'am wa yamshi fi al-aswaq what is this prophet he eats food and walks in the marketplace like if you're a prophet you're not supposed to eat food and you're not supposed to go shopping in the marketplace right and Allah retorted and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wama arsalna rasulan illa kana ya'kuluna ta'am wa yamshuna fil aswaq we did not send a messenger before 
except that he ate food and they walked in the marketplaces. They were human beings. They were human beings. And we tend to look at the Prophet ﷺ and his family life, uh, look at his life as a prophet, as a messenger, and we see, you know, this image of this perfect specimen of a man. But then when we look in his family life, we tend to see the human side of the Prophet ﷺ, and we can identify, and we can relate to that a little better in terms of how our lives are. And of course, there's no doubt that he was the best specimen, or he was the best you know, the perfect specimen of a husband, of a father, and that is our role model and our example that we should look to. But even with that, even in the mistakes that were made in family life, there's still fa'ida, there's still benefit in it for us. As the scholars, they say, as sa'idu min wa'idha bi ghaydihi wa shaqiyun min wa'idha bi nafsi. That the successful person is the one who learns from other people's mistakes, and the wretched person is the one who learns from his own mistakes. Meaning that you make your own mistakes and you learn from your own mistakes and you, you find yourself in this circle of mistakes correcting, mistakes correcting. When you could just look at the mistakes that other people have made, you can benefit from that and avoid making the same mistakes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Wa sallallahu wa ala nabihi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallamu taslimu kathira wa akhiru da'amana ala alhamdulillahi wa ala alihi wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.